Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. This is going to be a series for 2019 on growing large vegetables in containers. I'm making the switch from plastic to galvanized tubs. These are a little bit more expensive. They're about $22, but they're 17 gallons. It's a perfect size to grow a single squash plant, zucchini plant, acorn squash, butternut squash. You can grow the larger squash in here, but just one plant. You can grow a couple cucumbers in here, a single indeterminate tomato, the tomatoes that keep growing and growing, maybe two determinate tomatoes, three or four peppers. We're really going to be able to fill this up with the larger vegetables. You can put in six or eight green beans into here, pole beans. So 17 gallons, just want to give you an idea of what it's like. Here's my forearm, forearm in there. It's a large size. It is a little bit shallow. But it's nice for large tomatoes, for large vegetable plants, especially tomatoes. Because it's wider, as a tomato gets really tall, it's not going to flip the can over when you're trying to grow, or the tub over. When you're trying to grow in five gallon containers, or containers that are taller than sometimes wider, they will flip over when the wind comes. This is not going to happen with these types of tubs. Again, 17 gallons, that's what I recommend for this series. Get them at Home Depot, they're about $22 three holes in there you really want to make sure the water drains out you could put a hole right here if watering is an issue in your area and it gets really gets hot you could put a hole in the bottom one on this side one on the other side a little bit of a water reserve when this is flipped over will stay in here that's perfectly fine and then the excess will drain out so there's a couple ways to do it I'm going with holes in the bottom I'm just gonna let it drain out completely the key to container gardening is making sure you have a container mix, and I recommend making it, it's a lot cheaper, a container mix that holds water. This is peat moss. You could use cocoa core, combination of both. This is just my uh, native earth soil here. I planted some blueberries, so I have a lot of earth. 50% peat moss or cocoa core, 50% earth. We're gonna mix it together. That's gonna create the base. This is going to hold water. It's going to help the container not dry out. If your container dries out completely for a 24 hour period, it's really going to harm the vegetable plant that's growing. So you want a lot of peat moss. So I recommend starting with 50 peat moss, 50 earth. You could add in more peat moss if you need to. If you have compost, you could add compost into it afterwards. Into the container, any organic fertilizer, this happens to be a 346 NP and K nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. We are just going to, and again, any, I don't recommend any specific one. One handful, it's probably two or three tablespoons, sprinkle it in. About another handful, sprinkle it in. And we're just going to mix all of this up. I'm going to do that off camera. Then we're going to take another 50% peat moss, 50% earth, throw in another handful, so that's three handfuls in total, mix it together, and we're going to have a full container with a nice container mix that's going to hold water. Let me do that. We'll get to the next step. All right, so this is mixed through 50% peat. If you're not sure about um, how well it's going to hold moisture, add in more peat moss and less earth or less soil. If you don't have earth like I did from my... Um, ground from digging out the blueberries, go ahead and buy any bag that's called garden soil and use that. You don't need to go to something more expensive, just plain old garden soil, 50-50. We have, what, three handfuls of NP and K in there. Try and stick around a 555, up or down a couple doesn't matter. I'm going to show you today also how to plant a determined tomato in here and a couple of peppers. If you're growing tomatoes, I would highly recommend throwing in a handful of lime and mixing it in. That will provide calcium, which can help with blossom end rot. Blossom end rot is usually caused because of watering doesn't occur regularly. The plant can't access calcium, but it can also occur because there's no calcium available. This way you just check a box, you know there's calcium in here, and it's up to you to keep the moisture even. If you do that, your tomatoes are not going to get blossom and rot. So we have this set up. Leave an inch or two because we're going to put shredded hardwood on here. Mulch will help keep moisture in there and your plants will appreciate you for that. So this is the basic setup. Now, 
Again, basic setup. You can add in some compost if you have it. You can add in whatever secret ingredient you want. I often use worm castings. I'm not going to put that in here um, today. This is the base mix. Okay, let's get this set up. It's going to go on these pallets. The sun is straight back there, so my tomato, the larger plant, is going to go in that corner because you don't want the sun to hit your larger plants and then cast shade on the other plants. You want them all to get the maximum sun. So my tomato is going to go right there. Four pepper plants in the, the other container are going to go right there. All right, let me set that up and we'll get to planting. All right, so the soil is set up. We're going to do four pepper plants in here. You can certainly grow these in smaller containers. But in this series, the whole goal is really to grow in something where you're not going to have to be watering every single day. If it gets really hot, you may have to do that. But you want a nice large tub, 17 gallons, and we're going to drop four pepper plants into here. These are all sweet peppers. I've done a couple videos where you can grow two of these in a five gallon container. These plants have, are my transplants. They're getting a little um, overgrown in these small cups, so I'm going to take off the flowers take off some of the weaker leaves. I'm going to also show you how to use the uh, water-soluble fertil fertilizer to set these up. And tomato plant's a little beat up. These guys are a little beat up, but the water-soluble fertilizer will take care of it. Just drop in a hole, loosen the roots. You're going to stay just a little bit above the surface of where the soil was in the cup and press it in. So let's do all of those. If there's any flowers on here, remove them. Let me just make sure I put these in order so that I know what I'm growing. Loosen it up. Drop it in. So this was a Marconi Red. This is a miniature Red Bell. This is a Purple Beauty. Loosen it up. A couple of flowers. Remove them. Drop it in. And then this is the bull, a Bullnose Sweet Pepper. Same thing. Remove the flower, loosen it up, and just that quickly we have four pepper plants in this small space. They're going to do really well. For the tomato, this is a red torch. This is an All America Selections winner. Indeterminate variety. Going to remove the bottom leaves. Going to plant it to about here. Get that into the soil. It is beat up. Some flowers are forming. I'm going to remove them. Loosen up the root ball. Notice you don't have to be super gentle. Dig the hole deep enough. You don't want this sitting on the bottom, but we do want to get some of the stem into there. You may not be able to go as high as I said, but get a good chunk, something like that in there. And that's all you need to do to get them established. So let me drop the mulch on. I'm using a shredded hardwood. You can really use any mulch you want. I prefer the shredded hardwood. And I'm going to really fill this all the way up to the top. Leave a little bit of a lip so when you're pouring water into here, it doesn't pull over the side. Okay, let me do that and we'll get to the water soluble feeding. Okay, they're set up. They're mulched. Put the markers in. I may have called that one a red racer. That is an AS winner also, but that's the red torch. Soak in the container mix. Peat moss is usually dry, so just really wet this through before we put in the water-soluble fertilizer. This is what I used essentially, a, a uh, three cubic foot bale of peat moss, that was about 12 bucks, a bag of organic fertilizer, a bag of lime, and then an organic water-soluble fertilizer. And I use just regular soil out of my garden. So you're going to really want to soak this in two gallon container. Just follow the water soluble instructions. In the past, I've said use half strength, quarter strength, but to get them started, a gallon into each, water the leaves. Water soluble means the leaves can absorb it. It's a foliar feed. And I would put a gallon in there. That's the zucchini I'm going to plant in the next video. I'm going to be doing cucumbers also and watermelon. Soak the plant and then each side is going to get one gallon and you're really good to go for a couple of weeks. You put in plenty of fertilizer, you gave it a water soluble feed, and we'll talk more about these care, the care of these plants going forward. In this space, I'm going to be able to get at least eight of these 17 gallon containers. You can get a container size 14, 15, 16, 17 gallons, 18, 19, 20, whatever you want. You can use plastic. Again, these are about $22, a little bit expensive. 
but they're going to last seven, eight, nine, ten years. Why plastic can decay from the UV, UV rays from the sun in two to three years. So it's really up to you. Hope you enjoyed the video. This gives you some idea how you can grow large vegetables in nice sized containers, and you can really grow a garden for a family of four in this space. Please check out my seed shop. I sell everything you see here there, and please subscribe to my channel. And thanks so much for watching.